Hey Scorpios, welcome to April 2019. I just want to let you guys know I had started your reading earlier, but as soon as the two cards popped out, uh, like three days ago, I was like, this doesn't feel right. And the two cards were all about your investments and mainly about power and work. So I know we're on a better trajectory now that the six of cups popped out because I think that is more representative of what's going on this April 2019, especially with Scorpio energy. So uh, as you guys know, we just passed that March 20th super full moon in Libra plus Mercury retrograde plus the solar flares. And what it was doing, especially that Mercury retrograde, it was bringing up stuff from the past. It was bringing up stuff even from our mainly our childhood. And that's what the Six of Cups is all about. It's that childhood memories, you know, recognizing that children, fun, innocence, our inner child, that joy and laughter is really what we need to tap into this April 2019 because that's going to completely change the way we think about things. So the reason why it didn't feel right for me to do more of like a work like money related spread was because I think we need to uncover and clear up issues when it comes to childhood stuff before that because it's mainly coming from this new frame of mind um, about how we feel about ourselves as a kid and then translating that into adulthood. So time really is not linear. And as much as we feel like, okay, that was in the past, no, like <laughs> it's still affecting us 100% um, in our adult lives. And the easiest way for us to clear it is just to tap back into that inner childhood, um, remembering what we wanted to be when we grew up, remembering um, what our parents did for work and what that meant to us as a kid and just sort of going from there. For instance, you know, like when you just say your dad, it reminds me of that Arthur episode where Francine's dad is a garbage man and she loved that her dad would come home with all these different gifts and, you know, a new bike, yada, yada, yada. And then one day it was another person at school that said, ew, your dad's a garbage man. Like that's gross. He's just bringing you back people's junk. And it wasn't until then that Francine was like, oh, I'm, I'm not proud of my dad's job. I'm embarrassed, you know, but before that, it didn't matter what daddy did. You just, you know, you admire them. You're the number one fan. So it's kind of getting back to that remembrance, being like, what did I want to do? What was important to me before somebody said, no, be embarrassed by that. And that'll clear up a lot of that inner, inner childhood stress and that conflict that we've been dealing with in our adult lives. Okay. So what this April 2019 is all about is about a fire sign. So a lot of the times it's actually it's recently that I'm starting to realize that although it is a, a person like the this card, could, the court cards represent people, it could also absolutely represent just the energy of what this person personifies. So the Knight of Wands or the King of Wands, if it's not a fire male sign like uh, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, it could be somebody that embodies that characteristic, or maybe it's the characteristic that you need to bring into your life right now. So fire energy, impulsive. When you think about a fire, you just it just needs a small spark and it turns into a massive flame. Um, it makes me think about um, calling out fire, fire, asking for help. A fire sign is probably the most uh, likely sign to ask for help to say that they're struggling in some area of their life and they need guidance, which is a huge very important uh, trait to have. It's definitely a benefit. Um, so if this isn't a person in your life, a, a masculine fire sign, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, what April 2019 is calling you forth to do is be more impulsive, be more fire, be more pioneering, start something new, be more like a cardinal Aries sign. It is Aries season. It's time to initiate change instead of just sort of asking the universe uh, to change on your behalf and then you just flowing with it which is something that I usually advocate. I'm usually like, just go with the flow. And now I'm like, no, Aries season, don't flow with it, initiate it, and then you can flow into Taurus season. So the obstacle and the aid when it comes to this fire sign, whether it being a person or an energy, is the Ace of Cups, which is all about embracing new emotions, new feelings. You know, there's a W here, which of course is, I think represents water, but I'm also seeing an E, an R, a C, and a G. E-R-C-G, surge, surge, surge of emotion, surge of energy. So although the characteristic of the fire sign is all about that impulsivity, you still need the emotion behind it. 
um, to kind of give it that little that little bump up, to give it that little extra. So you want to have those emotions that are very pure, that are deeply rooted in the purity of that inner child energy, right? That inner child that doesn't lie, that doesn't have, uh, you know, the the social programming that says, I feel this way, but let me explain why. A child just cries, you know, or just screams or just gets angry. They don't need to understand within themselves why they're feeling that certain way. It's just how they feel and they express it. So this is going to be an obstacle and an aid when it comes to this uh, King of Wands energy. So it's either going to be something that is hindering your relationship with your impulsivity and with your pioneering energy or with this fire sign, or it's something that's going to just say hinder and also help that energy, okay? Ace of Cups, obstacle and the aid. Subconsciously, we got some negativity going on beneath the surface right now. So there's some negativity when it comes to a partnership. I think that that super full moon in Libra, what it did was it brought a lot of the imbalances and injustices within our relationship to the surface to be cleared, um, which is not an easy thing. And Libra is all about harmony. But within that harmony, it creates conflict, right? So if you have any Libra friends, you'll notice that they can seem kind of two-faced because they're over here talking to, to your enemy and they're also over here talking to you and they see both sides and you're like, God, <laughs> like pick a side. Whose side are you on? But the Libra energy is all about seeing the good, the bad, the ugly within every situation. It's really that devil's advocate. So what that super full moon did was it brought out the good, the bad, and the ugly in all of our relationships so that we can decide what's fair, what's balanced, and what do we need to kind of recalibrate to get back to, to center. Um, and subconsciously, I think what happened with the Scorpio is you saw the ugly side of your relationships and instead of flowing with it, you kind of lashed on to just the ugliness and said, well, how can I... How can I transform this ugliness into something that empowers me? And that's where there's some faltering. That's where it's turning this relationship into something more negative instead of a growth and a, and a catalyst for um, growth and transformation. It's turned into kind of like more of a selfish, well, how can I now change because of the energy that this person did instead of looking at the relationship as a whole and you and your partner or you and whoever taking a step back together and looking at the problem together and saying okay what do we need to do together because Aries season is all about individuality and, and number one and leadership by yourself but then Libra is all about that balance with with another person that cooperation and that harmony so subconsciously there's some negativity, some negative feelings surrounding relationships in general, just feeling kind of like hooked to somebody, feeling very kind of uh, like I'm hearing taken advantage of, just feeling very latched um, and, and now really kind of figuring out if that's what you want. Um, and this will absolutely stem back to that inner child when you look at your parents' relationship, when you look at um, your parents, especially their first love, if you know your parents' first love, that's going to tell you so much about your parents' heart and therefore your heart, right? Because your your mom carried you. Like a lot of her thoughts, emotions, feelings when she was pregnant with you would be directly downloaded into you. As a Scorpio, you guys probably suck that right, right up. And usually Scorpios, especially Moon and Scorpios, are very closely linked to their mom. Very like, you know, um, especially the Moon and Scorpio kid will be hiding behind their mom's apron, like always, always with their mom until that trust is broken. Um, for my Scorpio husband, we realized that his trust was broken with his mom when they were sleep training she had to put a lock on the outside of his door because he would always come out and it was it was like a safety thing. Like she didn't let him sleep like that, but she would lock it until he fell asleep. And it created a, an inner child trauma because he would try to get out and he felt trapped, right? So now he has like sleep problems where he just needs to feel very open and free and needs a lot of space and can't feel constricted, can't have a lot of blankets. Like he needs to feel free when he sleeps. And that's something that I really needed to share with you guys because I'm like, that's something that as a Scorpio, even as a Scorpio child, moon and Scorpio, you're never going to forget. So take a, take, a, take a quick second to go back to your childhood and you'll feel it. You'll know that exact moment where something clicked in your psyche and subliminally, sub, subconsciously has now been kind of ruling your life that you can clear with this Aries season, with this super full moon. And usually it's based on a relationship, 
based on something, a relationship with a parent, with your with your mom or your mom's relationship with your dad, take a look at it and really examine it from an, from an adult lens and then just kind of just gently let it go and just say, okay, I'm, I'm moving on. That's, that's okay. That happened. I understand why I now act like this. Now that I understand, I'm not going to let it just rule my life. I'm just going to, I'm just going to slowly, gently just, just let it pass. So although subconsciously feeling very tethered in a negative way to a relationship, you're thinking that you got to just focus on your responsibilities, head down, focus on what you got to accomplish, focus on what you, what you're setting out to do. Just getting, just grinding, just grinding. This is, this is a distraction and you guys are distracting yourself because I think what's going on is, you know, you have to make a decision that is really going to bring kind of like this fancy free risk taking. It's going to be new. It's going to be inventive. It's going to be innovative. It's going to be fresh. It's going to be funky. And that brings a lot of fear, right? And April, 2019 is a seven universal month which means that we're doing a lot of inner analysis and that inner analysis can feel very lonely. It can also feel like everybody hates us. <laughs> you know, we kind of go inward and say, nobody likes us. So let me just, let me just focus on working hard because at least I know that at work, I'm getting that instant gratification through a paycheck because right now the relationships, you're not getting that gratification back and it's just causing a lot of insecurities within you guys. So, Thinking that you just got to stay focused and grind to distract you from the fun, new, innovative and fresh ideas and feelings and emotions that are coming in right now, this April 2019 and kind of asking you guys to explore it because Scorpio is a fixed sign. Scorpio is a fixed sign. It doesn't feel like it because I find that with the Scorpio energy from the Scorpios that I know is um, you guys will make changes but it's only after you've been able to process and be like, okay, I'm ready to change. I've done my cocooning and now I can actually initiate this change. But any other changes that are thrust upon you, it really throws off your sense of power and control, which is detrimental to a Scorpio. Um, and I think that's why you guys are just distracted with working hard because you know that as soon as you let up a little bit, the universe is gonna bombard you with a change and then you won't have to initiate it, right? So this is where you guys are right now, um, ebbing and flowing. You know, there's a lot of intuition, a lot of a lot of subconscious energy that's fueling you guys right now. Um, and it's like I said, it's quite the ebb and the flow. Like it's almost like day to day, you guys feel very intuitive and spiritual and dreamy, and like your dreams are speaking to you, and you're very connected to your spiritual side. And then it's like the next day, it's like okay, back to reality as we know it you know back to the materialism back to work back to the the rat race essentially and it's like every day you're ebbing and flowing between this this dreamlike stance and this very um stabilized grounded rooted energy which is working at odds but it's a really beautiful dichotomy that i think if you guys really embrace it and when you have those dreamlike days you're really envisioning the future you're being creative you're being artistic and you're using that um, that medium for transformation. And then on the days where you're feeling very rooted and grounded and more on the tangible side, that's when you can start to initiate the creative side and embrace it and kind of infuse it into the realism side and, and really harmonize the two, another uh, Libra energy um, that you can use with that super full moon that is still floating around. It'll still float around for a little bit. Okay, family, friends, heartbreak, sorrow, grief, um, involving at least three people, mainly, mainly a projection. So the three energy is all about creativity. So this heartbreak, sorrow, grief uh, that your family has going on right now, that is being projected onto the Scorpios. So if you're finding that you're getting frustrated with people, you're getting frustrated in relationships with your family and friends, Try to pull yourself back and be more of a visionary and say, this is just a projection of their own insecurities, their own sadness and their own sorrow and grief, and maybe give them a little bit of compassion, right? Because I don't think family and friends are emotionally in the place that they need to be. And Scorpio, you guys as water signs, you guys have that very fiery, but very deep, watery, emotional energy that... You know, you, you guys have this, like my dad's a double Scorpio and he'll be in a room and he won't say a word, but he's influencing everything in the room. 
He's totally, he has so much power and control with his double Scorpio energy and his Venus in Scorpio. Um, he, he's controlling the entire room without ever saying a word. And it's only my Scorpio husband that's, that made me realize like, oh no, your dad, he may seem, you know, drunk and just zoned out, but no, no, he's, watch his eyes. He's listening. He's taking in everything. He's uh, processing it and digesting it. And then who knows what he does with the information, but he doesn't just sit on it. So family and friends, they definitely are feeling very heartbroken right now. There's a lot of pain um, going on. They probably got hit really hard with the full moon in, in uh, Libra as well. So they're just kind of asking you to use your scorponic energy to transmute it, to bring it in and be like more of like a recycling bin. Instead of saying, instead of reacting to their projection, pulling it in and saying, you know what, I'll do this for you, family and friends, because I love you. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna recycle it and I'm gonna spit back out positivity. Because that's how powerful you guys are. Okay. Hope and fear is the Empress card. And the Empress card is, I always say this, nine times out of ten, it's pregnancy. Lately, it's been more like eight times out of ten, it's pregnancy. But it's mainly about creating something. Something that you've birthed. Because when you think about pregnancy, you know what I mean? Like, you had to have sex in order to get pregnant. So you had to decide to have sex and you had to pick the partner, you pick the setting, you decide that you're not gonna use protection or you decide that you are and you know, subconsciously it doesn't work and it really you know, is in your favor. Um, birth, manifestation, nurturing something that you've created is based on something that you've decided to bring into this world, whether it was consciously or subconsciously. So there's a hope and a fear about bringing something into the material world. So that dreamlike stance that you guys go through that you are ebbing and flowing, you want to take that energy and implant it into the world, but there is so much fear. Do you wanna know why there's fear? And I literally just read the quote today. There's fear because you know you have to make waves. You know you have to make waves. That's the only way you're gonna make change, right? You have to make waves and those waves are fearful because waves, you know, they crash into other people What's the three things I'm just reading? When you create something new, it's instantly going to be opposed. People are going to get angry. People get like pissed off when you're living your authentic self, uh, selves because it threatens their sense of insecurity or their sense of security, sorry. So they're going to get pissed off. They're going to get angry. They're going to get violently oppose it. And then they'll accept it once, once everything's said and done. You know what I mean? Like think about, um, think about, Think about Steve Jobs. He went through all this opposition. He was fired from his company. People hated him. They violently opposed him. And then, you know, he created something so magnificent in one generation because of the opposition. And I'm pretty sure Steve Jobs is either a Scorpio or a moon in Scorpio. He's either a Scorpio moon in Aries or an Aries moon in Scorpio. No matter what, he has that Scorpio energy, just like RuPaul. RuPaul is also, I think RuPaul is a double Scorpio. And think about what the opposition that he goes through just to create his own alter ego, just to create his, you know, his drag persona. He gets, he had crazy opposition for years. And now look at it. Now there's even like a Netflix cartoon on it. So you guys are going to be opposed and it's going to be really scary. That's where that fear of creating is coming from. But I promise you guys, it needs to happen because if you don't do it during Aries season of all seasons, there's nobody else because you guys have, you guys are the power behind the Zodiac. You guys are the, the authority. You guys set the tone, especially if you're Pluto Scorpio generation. Think about that generation. Change, change the whole game, change the whole world by just saying, no, let's do it this way, <laughs> you know? Pluto and Scorpio generation is, is millennials, you know? And I was just watching this special where someone's like, oh, millennials just came in and said, hey, you guys have been just putting up with this. Why don't you just say no if you don't like it? And people are like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, me too. Like maybe we should just say, no, we don't like it. So yes, there's a hope and fear to create, but the fear is just because you know that your creation is gonna be something that makes waves and it's needed, it's needed. Okay, so this is the outcome, guys, for April 2019. You're gonna keep working hard. You're gonna keep thinking that you need to work hard, that you need to have a side hustle, that you need to do this and that. Um, but at the end of the day, you guys are manifestors. 
you guys have abundance with minimal effort, okay? Keep telling yourself that. I am abundant in all areas of my life with minimal effort. I don't need to strain myself to be abundant. So thinking that you have to work hard, what that does is it brings in a lot of intuition and you start to understand and uncover things within your relationships. Uh, and I'm talking every relationship, even like employee, employer, even your relationship with yourself and your inner child and your parents' relationship, every relationship in your life, um, you're gonna uncover that. And intuitively, you're gonna know what you need to do. Intuitively, you're gonna be like, okay, see this young earth sign? I need to do it for this young earth sign. I need to put my focus on their best outcome because then the day Scorpios are very selfless. When you think about a scorpion in the desert, scorpion in the desert would literally, it disembowels itself to protect its family and to protect itself against predators. So you guys are, are I think, more of the guardians when, when people are in your inner circle. You're almost more of the guardian than the Taurus, which is your exact opposite, your, the exact opposite sign. So if you find that this work that you've been doing, this fear when it comes to starting something, look to this young earth sign and do it for them. Maybe it's even negative. Maybe it's like, I'm going to do it to show them that I can do it because they don't believe in me. But do it for the young earth sign because instinctively, you know that it's going to be a really great thing for you to just start this thing, to put the emotion behind it. Clear the inner child trauma, you know, give your, give your inner child a hug, get rid of the, the fear there, the pain body that's been kind of looking around now it's a new season, whole new start of the astrological year. We're officially in Aries. You can start this year with a fresh slate. That super full moon did that for us, okay? Love you, Scorpio, so much. As always, please comment, like, subscribe, and share. If you want a personalized reading, my details are below. I use astrology and numerology for all my readings. Love you guys. I hope you have an amazing April, and I will see you in May. Bye, guys.